Good morning, everyone. Today is Thursday, June 8th. Thank you so much for joining into our ever-changing in name webinar. <laughs> Um, you know, we, we've uh, done these webinars for quite some time now, and they are, they've been the PCACA webinars, uh, the ACA, the AHCA, and now we've just combined them because goodness knows what we're going to end up with. Um, but I thought it was important to let you know that we are still keeping you up to date on any of the ACA um, issues that, that may affect your business and also um, the American Healthcare Act and following that through uh, either through the success <laughs> through the Senate or um, the demise. So uh, again, we're just trying to keep you as informed as possible. We do have some new folks on the call today and, and I always love to see that because it does mean that you guys are, are taking that extra step as many of you have throughout this and really staying informed and being that resource for your clients because it is, it's a tough gig out there and uh, you know the amount of misinformation that's out there and what your clients may or may not understand about even about the ACA still, um, let alone the AHCA uh, is, is um, you know quite a lot. So I appreciate you joining in and thank you so much. Um, my name is Deb Wilkinson, and I'm the Vice President of the Health Plan Options Department here at URL. We oversee uh, the group health markets here in Pennsylvania and uh, regionally, <clears throat> as well as what is left of the individual health market. As promised, uh, one of our newest uh, agenda items is the updates on the law. So the new administration agenda bullet point here is, is what we'll start with. Um, not tons happening today uh, and this past week, but some things of note. Uh, the Republican senators are uh, talking a lot about oh, being open to taxing employer-sponsored plan. This is uh, maybe known to some of you that are involved in NAHU or PAYHU as the employer exclusion. And really what this means is that an employer-sponsored plan could be a taxable benefit to the employee, and of course the implications of that for businesses uh, could be detrimental. But additionally what it means is that there's no longer that tax-favored option of pre-tax uh, health premium. So again, you can see how this could drastically affect uh, not only employers' bottom lines, but employees as well because taxable income uh, is going to increase those safe harbors, if you will, of the POP plans, the POP programs, pre-taxing those health insurance um, uh, premiums. That could all go away. Again, it's just in discussion, but with with the GOP being open to it, um, you know, who knows what's going to happen. But I thought it was important enough to talk about. And, uh, you know, maybe this summer if you're traveling and you travel to Washington or travel, you know, to our state local government, um, you know, please, please reach out to your local and, and federal representatives uh, because this really could be detrimental. Again, nothing's passed yet. It's all just in discussion, but um, it's been in discussion for a while and, and hopefully it won't pass. Um, this could be encouraging. The Freedom Caucus, the ever-present uh, <laughs> Freedom Caucus, is urging the uh, Republican leadership to cancel their August recess so they can work on their agendas and objectives such as the tax reform and other objectives uh, such as health insurance reform. So that should be interesting to see if they'll cancel that or not. Um, goodness knows something has to get done, um, but again, we'll see what happens. And on a local level, um, Representative Seth Grove from York is introducing a House Bill 1407, which proposes a five-year lifetime limit on Medicaid and also adds a work requirement. Obviously, with our current uh, governor and the current administration, there's probably no appetite for that. But again, you can see how locally um, we're trying to maybe be a little bit more responsible. Um, you know, I'd certainly like to see this, as many of you I know would, or, or maybe wouldn't. But, you know, it is something that I, I thought uh, should be mentioned, and um, hopefully we can get that through. Um, but, again, it's unlikely that even if it, if it gets through our 
our chambers that uh, the governor would sign it. So uh, again, worth mentioning, but uh, probably not going to happen. On to the next bullet point, Cat Blue Cross commissions. Uh, the individual was paid on Monday. The med subs are still delayed. Um, just talked to Brandy Coleman, our director of commissions, uh, yesterday. There's still not a date on this. Um, they're working very closely with Capital trying to get these issues resolved, but unfortunately the news is not good. I don't have a date that they would be uh, released. But um, again, wanted you to be aware of that. In my newsletter that you'll get uh, in about 20 minutes, um, in Vince's corner, the Leg Reg Review, it does mention that the filings for 2018 are an average of 8.8% .8 increase on the individual plans and 66 .6 on the small group. It also goes on to say that filings will be available to view on July 21st, which is not terribly far away on the um, insurance.pa.gov site. I can tell you that, you know, 6.6 .6 on the small group sounds really attractive, but what you have to realize is there's also that quarterly trend built in. So if you have a group that renews 1-1 one, one and, you know, theoretically have a trend of anywhere from 1% to 4%, um, in addition to that possible 6.6%, .6%, they could get an additional 11 to, or 4 to 16 percent, which could essentially make renewals, um, you know, anywhere from 11 to 22 percent or more in, uh, you know, for their 12-month renewal. So again, I don't know that those are attractive rates, um, but we're here to help and here to strategize with you when we do start getting those renewals. And remember, those 12-1 renewals are slated to come out uh, the first or second week of August. So we are essentially heading full force, full steam ahead into fourth quarter quoting. Um, so let us help you quote them and strategize and see what we can do to retain those group clients for you. Um, speaking of renewals, Cat Blue Cross started a new renewal process. It's an auto renewal 10 days prior to the renewal date. Um, this started with the July renewals, or actually started um, on Friday. Uh, they implemented this new procedure. So basically, if you have a group that's renewing um, for 12-1, they have to have all the paperwork and renewal in, as, as they should, um, no later than the 12th, but um, Capital's going to start their auto renewal if they don't have any additional information on what the group may or may not be, you know, contemplating for their renewal. I think it's going to cause issues. Um, so I would just say let's let's all try to get out there and get those renewals done so that we don't have an auto renewal and then have to change it. I just think that's going to be a nightmare for everyone, mostly your clients, uh, with the billing and getting a plan that they don't want. So I just see uh, data entry nightmares. Um, but again, the, just be mindful of getting those renewals in as quickly as possible. Anything after the 12th would still need the late letter. Um, but this is kind of even in addition to that, that uh, you have to be mindful of the time frame. Cat Blue Cross group quotes for the mid-market with uh, less than 51 enrolled. There's a risk assessment that is going to be required along with the additional census details. So um, this is almost quasi underwriting, really. They're going to kind of look at everything, um, and I, I just want you to be mindful of that, um, you know, so that you're not caught off guard when one of your new business specialists tells you that additional information is needed. Um, right into uh, the last bullet point before we open it up for any questions. Um, if you're looking for a new general agency, I, I would um, urge you to reach out to me and I can tell you all of the wonderful things and the complimentary things that URL offers. One of the things that we've just implemented about, oh, probably about a month ago, is we, we purchased the uh, group quoting portal called Benefix. It is a local company actually in Lancaster County. It's a startup company. Uh, you may have seen some of our friendly competitors advertising the, the portal. It's a great portal. 
Um, I was hoping to supply a, a test quote for you. I, I just didn't um, get that converted in time. So if you want to see a test quote, uh, let me know and I can email that to you. If you're getting your quotes from URL and your new business specialist, you're going to have seen the Betafix portal. Um, they, they have now venture capitalists behind them, uh, so they are going national. They're, it, it, it's a really great system. And one of the benefits of doing your group health through URL is that we have preferred pricing on these programs. So there are three different models, and essentially um, we're getting some pretty deep discounts. And if you're interested in purchasing the portal, uh, again, we will do all of your quotes and we turn them around very quickly, but if it's something that you want to have within your bag of tricks so that you can do your own renewals or you know your own quotes, tweaking everything, um, then let me know because you can get a quoting portal for as little as uh, $37.50 a month up to $62.50 a month. Um, those are very reasonable prices in my opinion, and again, it's not a requirement that you do your own quotes. We're happy to do those for you, but um, I know some of you have expressed interest in, in being able to quote your own, and now we have um, a solution for you. Last but not least is the open forum. I do see some questions coming in. As you're formulating the questions, just uh, want you to know that we will be back here next week on the 15th of June and uh, hopefully have a lot more to share. Um, let me see. Dave says, what time period were the CBC commissions paid for? The individual commissions were actually paid for 1-1 one, one, uh, through current. There are some missing ones, so just check everything very carefully. And, and of course, the med subs, um, I have no date on those yet, but I hopefully by next week I'll be able to say you've received your commissions. Um, I'm crossing my fingers. Elise wants to mention to everyone that the 7-1 CBC renewals were sent by URL to the agents in April. Yes, it's just that the process for the July, or that starting with the July renewals, uh, the 10-day renewal rule, um, started on June 2nd. So you didn't get your July renewals on June 2nd, but the process started for June 2nd, starting with the July renewal that you received in April. <laughs> Hopefully that satisfies Elise out there who's hollering at me. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. Um, anyway, those are the questions that we have today. As always, I truly appreciate all of you joining in. Please contact me if you want to know what we're doing on the group health side. I, I can guarantee that you're not going to find a better offer out there, and we'd be happy to uh, you know, show you what we're offering and, and hopefully be able to earn your business. So don't hesitate to give me a call. Until then, I just thank you for joining in. Appreciate your time that you took. Please get out and enjoy this beautiful weather, and have a wonderful weekend. Thank you. Bye-bye.